the voice of God, the shepherd of her mouth. The similitudes. Ninth similitude, beginning. Ninth similitude. The great mysteries in the building of the militant and the triumphant church. Chapter 1. After I had written down the commandments and similitudes of the shepherd, the angel of repentance, he came to me and said, I wish to explain to you what the Holy Spirit that spake with you in the form of the church showed you, for that spirit is the Son of God. For as you were somewhat weak in the flesh, it was not explained to you by the angel. When, however, you were strengthened by the Spirit, and your strength was increased, so that you were able to see the angel also, then accordingly was the building of the tower shown you by the church. In a noble and solemn manner did you see everything as is shown you by a virgin, but now you see them through the same Spirit as is shown by an angel. You must, however, learn everything from me with greater accuracy. For I was sent for this purpose by the glorious angel to dwell in your house, that you might see all things with power, entertaining no fear even if as it, it was, was as it was before. And he led me away into Arcadia to a round hill, and he placed me on top of the hill and showed me a large plain, and around about the plain twelve mountains, all having different forms. The first was black as soot, and the second bare without grass, and the third full of thorns and thistles, and the fourth with grass half withered, the upper parts of the plant screen and the parts about the roots withered. And some of the grasses, when the sun scorched them, became withered, and the fifth mountain had green grass and was ragged. And the sixth mountain was quite full of clefts, some small and others large, and clefts were, gre were grassy, and the plants not very vigorous, but rather, as it were, decayed. The seventh mountain, again, had cheerful pastures, and the whole mountain was blooming, and every kind of cattle and birds were feeding upon that mountain. And the more the cattle and the birds ate, the more grass of that mountain flourished. And the eighth mountain was full of fountains, and every kind of the Lord's creatures drank of the mountains of that mountain. But the ninth mountain had no water at all, and was wholly a desert, and had within it deadly serpents, such which destroyed men. And the tenth mountain had very large trees and was completely shaded, and under the shadow of the trees sheep lay resting and ruminating. And the eleventh mountain was very thickly wooded, and those trees were productive, being adorned with various sons of fruits, so that anyone seeing them would desire to eat of their fruits. The twelfth mountain again was wholly white, and its aspect was cheerful, and the mountain in itself was very beautiful. Chapter 2 and in the middle of the plain he showed me a large white rock that had arisen out of the plain, and the rock was more lofty than the mountains, rectangular in shape, so as to be capable of containing the whole world. And that rock was old, having a gate cut out of it. And the cutting out of the gate seemed to me as if it were recently done. And the gate glittered to such a degree under the sunbeams that I marveled at the splendor of the gate and around about the gate were standing twelve virgins. The four who stood at the corner seemed to be to me more distinguished than the others. They were all, however, distinguished, and they were standing at the four parts of the gate, two virgins again uh, between each other. And they were clothed in white linen tunics, with gracefully, gracefully girded, having their right shoulders exposed, as if about to bear some burden. Thus they stood ready, for they were exceedingly cheerful and eager. After I had seen these things, I marveled in myself, because I was beholding great and glorious sights. And again I was perplexed about the virgins, because although so delicate, they were standing courageously as if about to carry the whole heavens. And the shepherd said to me, Why are you reasoning in yourself, and perplexing your mind, and distressing yourself? For the things which you cannot understand, do not attempt to comprehend as if you were wise, but ask the Lord that you may receive understanding and know them. You cannot see what is behind you, but you see what is before. Whatever then you cannot see, let alone, and do not torment yourself about it. But what you see, make yourself master of it. And do not waste your labor about other things. 
and I will explain to you everything that I show you. Look therefore on the things that remain. Chapter 3 I saw six men come, tall and distinguished and similar in appearance, and they summoned a multitude of men. And they who came also were tall men and handsome and powerful. And the six men commanded them to build a tower above the rock. And great was the noise of those men who came to build the tower, as they ran hither and thither around the gate. And the virgins who stood around the gate told the men to hasten to build the tower. Now the virgins had spread out their hands as if about to receive something from the men. And the six men commanded stones to ascend out of the pit and to go to the building of the tower. And there went up ten shining rectangular stones, not hewn in the quarry. And the six men called the virgins and bade them to carry all the stones that were intended for the building and to pass through the gate and give them to the men who were about to build the tower. And the virgins put upon one another the first ten stones which had ascended from the pit and carried them together, each stone by itself. Chapter 4 And as they stood together around the gate, those who seemed to be strong carried them, and they stooped down under the corners of the stone, and the others stooped down under the sides of the stone. And in this way they carried all the stones, and they carried them through the gate as they were commanded, and gave them to the men of the tower. And they took the stones and proceeded with the building. Now the tower was built upon the great rock and above the gate. Those ten stones were prepared as the foundation for the building of the tower, and the rock and gate were the support of the whole of the tower. And after the ten stones, another twenty-five came up out of the pit, and these were fired into the building of the tower, being carried by the virgins as before. And after these ascended thirty-five, and these in like manner were fitted into the tower, and after these other forty stones came up, and these were cast into the building of the tower, and there were four rows in the foundations of the tower, and they ceased ascending from the pit, and the builders also ceased for a little. And again the six men commanded the multitude of the crowd to bear stones from the mountains for the building of the tower. They were accordingly brought forth from all the mountains of various colors, and being hewn by the men were given to the virgins. And the virgins carried them through the gate and gave them for the building of the tower. And when the stones of various colors were placed in the building, they all became white alike and all lost all their different colors. And certain stones were given by the men for the building, and these did not become shining, but as they were placed, such also were they found to remain. For they were not given by the virgins, not carried through the gate. These stones, therefore, were not in keeping with the others in the building of the tower. And the six men, seeing these unsuitable stones in the building, commanded them to be taken away and to be carried away down to their own place, whence they had been taken. And being removed one by one, they were laid aside. And they say to the men who brought the stones, Do not ye bring any stones at all for the building, but lay them down beside the tower, that the virgins may carry them through the gate, and may give them for the building. For unless, they said, they be carried through the gate by the hands of the virgins, they cannot change their colors. Do not toil therefore, they said, to no purpose. <laughs>